So, uh, hi, my name is Amanda. I am a senior majoring in biochemistry in Columbia College. And I currently work with Professor Virginia Cornish, in, who's based in the Department of Chemistry here at Columbia. Um, but I specifically work on doing biochemistry research. And my project is actually focusing on doing work within the ribosome. And so to kind of just give you some background, um, the title of my poster here is Discrimination of the Amino Acid by the Translational Machinery. And so to kind of start giving you some introduction, back in 1958, Francis Crick um, actually came up with the adapter hypothesis, which has become somewhat of the dogma of the ribosome field, stating that the mRNA codon and the tRNA anticodon is pretty much like the money area of the ribosome, and this is how the body makes proteins and peptides. And so stating that it has actually become the dogma, one of our recent grad students in our lab did a project on natural amino acids comparing them to misacylated naturals. And so basically right here you see the scheme and here is where you're finding the natural amino acids, so tRNA alanine with, tRNA, with alanine and, as the amino acid, phenylalanine as the amino acid with the tRNA, phenylalanine and lysine with the tRNA lysine. And then with a simple chemistry we're actually able to misacylate these. So for instance here you're seeing tRNA phenylalanine with the lysine amino acid. And using our translational machinery and our, um, actually our, our ribosome um, trans translation assays, he did a couple of experiments comparing these um, with the relative dipeptide yields, comparing to the naturals, as well as com doing a selection competition assay. And what we found is actually that these misacylated um, natural amino acids are actually going in with pretty much the same efficiency as the natural amino acids, showing that the ribosome is really not discriminating against these misacylated naturals, which was a really interesting find. And so kind of stepping to the side of his project, I'm actually looking at D-amino acids right here. And so here's a subset of D-amino acids that I'm looking at right now. And these are all charged onto tRNA lysine. And the difference between naturals and D-amino acids is that Ds is just a slight stereochemistry um, difference. And so for instance, here this amino group, it's pointing out. In a natural, it would be pointing back. Um, and so using these, I'm also using the same uh, translational machinery and trans in vitro translation system that we have incorporated in our lab to do these same type of dipeptide experiments to look at selection and specifically I'm looking at tRNA pairing effects now. And so here's just a portrayal of a ribosome prep that I actually did uh, this past summer. It's just a very difficult purification uh, process and so I just like to kind of show that this is one of the components that goes into doing the whole translation system. And then down here we're showing the use of the flexozyme ribozyme which is how we actually put these misacylated amino acids onto the tRNA of choice. And so simply just by labeling the amino acid with a DBE, we're able to put um, whatever amino acid of choice onto the tRNA of choice as well. And then here is just an example of some of the results that I have of amino acylation with D amino acids, um, showing that their percentages are relatively the same in this case, but um, really with the amino acylations, it depends on what tRNA you're using, it depends on what amino acid. You can see as much as a 52% charging, as low as an 8% charging. And so here's just a scheme of uh, the differences in yield. And then moving forward from that, once you get everything amino acylated, we're actually able to move forward and do experiments. And so here we're showing, I'm showing some preliminary data of looking at the different D amino acids on tRNA lysine against the natural lysine tRNA lysine. And we're looking at, again, dipeptide yield translations. And so here what we're showing is that the lysine, tRNA lysine, is going to 90, 95% in a half an hour. The D lysine on tRNA lysine is also going to almost 80%. But as you move away from the D lysine on the tRNA lysine using D, different D amino acids, you're actually showing that their yields are actually changing, which is different than what we've found with the misacylated naturals, that the, the ribosome really isn't discriminating against these. So it's interesting to kind of move forward and see where we're going to find um, where these discrimination effects are actually occurring in the ribosome. Um, and this is where my project is going to be continuing from there on.